Okay, so today we're going to be making this positioning space right here. I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, and basically this looks like a little bit more complex of a part, um, but it's actually just uh, three different circle locations, and then we're going to make everything off of those circle locations, but with some trimming and some tangency, um, and we'll get to that in a moment. So first thing I want to do is I want to locate these three circles before I take that off my screen. And the big thing is, is we notice all the dimensions are based off of this one circle at the bottom here. All three of these uh, circles are not the same size because we can see right here, this says it's a diameter of 1.25. We can see up in the top right that this one says there's two times a diameter of one, meaning that this one's 1.25, but this one up here and this one over here are one. Now for the outside circles, what some people don't notice when they create this, is this circle, this is part of the circle here, but then there's also a piece right here. So what I like to do is I'm going to make these three circle locations, and then when we build these other edges, I may just trim uh, just a little piece of the trimming and leave that circle for the time being um, so that I can use that other edge right there. Um, so if I look at these circle locations, I have one here, and these other two are six away. I know that because this center circle has a radius of six. And from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle is the definition of a radius. And that would be six. Now the other thing, I'm going to play around with these angles too. But first thing I'll do is I'll create this original circle. So I'll go into AutoCAD here. I'll turn my grid on so it looks like what people are used to seeing. And then I'm going to create a circle. And I like to type. Um, you can also go up and click here, but I'm going to just type in C for circle because that's how I like to use AutoCAD, move the mouse as little as possible. And then for my center point, I'm going to put it right on the zero just because we're not making a drawing, we're just making the part. So I'm just going to center it. Um, so zero comma zero, it's going to put my center point right there. And if I look at the radius of those larger circles, the radius is 1.25. Okay, and I know that because it says it right here. All right, but it also says tip, which is something we don't use on drawings anymore, but what that used to mean and what it means here is typical, meaning any any radius that's not dimensioned that looks like it could be around that size is assumed as 1.25. But in updated ANSI standards, we don't do that anymore. That's okay. Um, so the next thing I like to do to find these other two centers of the circles is I'm going to actually create lines that go from this original circle to the center of the other circle. So my first line, I'll create the one over here because it's a little bit easier. So if I was going to the right, that would be a zero degree in my polar coordinates. If I was going up, it would be 90. So this 30 degrees means I need to subtract 30 from 90, which gives me 60. So I'll show you how that works. I'll create my line, activate my AutoCAD, type L for line, hit enter. I'll start in the center, okay, and I'm going to say at 6 inches, and then I'm going to hold shift and put the little angle symbol you see next to the 49 degrees right now. So I'm going to hold shift and hit my comma button, which will put in that little Pac-Man, like I like to call him. And then, like I said, 60 degrees, which will bring me up at that angle there. Now I'll get out of that by hitting the spacebar or escape, and then I'll hit spacebar again, and I'll click here. This time I'm going to bring this back over. So this is going to be 90 plus 45, because up is 90, and then we're going more, going counterclockwise around our little compass here. So for this, I'm going to type in at 6 at an angle by holding shift and hitting that comma key. 135, which is 90 plus 45, and that'll put it right over there. Okay, now from here, I can create those other two circles. So C, enter, click, 1.25 is my radius, spacebar, click, 1.25. I also could have copied my original circle, but I don't know that it would have saved me a whole lot of time. Um, there's, a, there's certainly other ways you can do this. This is the way I like to do this stuff. So now I can get rid of these lines by just selecting them and hitting delete. Or I could type E and hit enter and then erase those two lines. Either way, probably the same amount of time. So now, like I said earlier, I'm going to create the outside edge 
of all of these. Okay, and I'm going to do it with a couple different ways. So first, one way, which is a way I used in a previous tutorial, tangent tangent radius is awfully valuable for a circle. And I'm going to pick around where I think the tangent point is on here. And I'm going to think around where I think the tangent point is on here. And the radius is 2.5. And we can see that works out nicely to create this curve. And you can see the tangent point here was right here and right here. Now for the top one, I need to do a little bit of math. Okay, So if I go from the center out to this radius is 6. Then to get to this radius, that means I have to add from the center to the outside of this radius, which is 1.25. So this radius up here is 6 plus 1.25, which gives me 7.25. So I'm going to click tangent, tangent radius. I think my tangent point is right around here. This one's kind of tough to put in. It's easy to accidentally put it in the wrong way. 7.25 for my radius, that went in the right way. Now let me just show you something. If I did that same thing, and let's say maybe I pick a little too far to the right, and a little too far to the left, and I type in 7.25, that thing's going to flip the other way. Okay. So if you have that result, just undo it, Okay, and then try and pick around here and around here. So like the upper right quadrant of this one, the upper left of this one over here. Now my last one is a tangent line between these two. Okay, and there's a couple ways I can do that. So for one, if you don't already have it on, because by default, for whatever reason, AutoCAD turns this off, make sure you, you hit this little arrow up here and show menu bar. I'll show you what that looks like. When I hit show menu bar, it gives me those normal pull downs you normally see. All right, if you don't already have it on, then once it's on, I can hit toolbars, toolbars, AutoCAD, and that's my most common AutoCAD toolbars, and I like to use that object snap toolbar because that's really valuable, mainly for that tangent, okay? So I can create my line, either click line up here, I can type L and hit enter. And then I'm gonna pick tangent, and then I'm gonna pick the outside of the circle near where I want the tangent. You can see now it's gonna chase around wherever I move my cursor. Now, one thing that people forget to do, you have to hit tangent again if you have another tangent point because it only works for one, one selection. And I click again, and now I've got a nice tangent line there, so I can hit escape. Now I'm going to trim. So TR for trim, I hit enter. I'm just going to select everything to make it easy. Hit enter again. And now I'm just, like I said, I'm going to leave these circles in here because I'm going to need them for later. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this outside point here. And that's pretty much all I got to get rid of for now. So now I can hit escape. And I've got the general shape of what I need. Now I'll show you a nice easy way I like to do this. Now this tells you that this is 0.75 typically, meaning that anywhere there's a thickness that is similar to this, right here, for example, right here, for example, right here, right here, is 0.75 because it doesn't give me another dimension. So to create this part, what I like to do is type O for offset, hit enter, and I'm going to say 0.75 for my thickness. And I'm going to offset this down. I'm going to offset this in. And I'm going to offset this in. And as you can see, that kind of creates that other shape I need. Okay. So from here, I can hit escape, and I just need to do some more trimming. TR, enter, select everything, enter. Get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of this little piece here, get rid of that there, that there, that there, that. And you can see I'm just getting rid of the stuff that isn't part of my shape. All right, and now I have pretty much everything except some rounds in the corner, okay, and my smaller circle. So I should put those in next because I have some nice object snap locations. So I have two one inch diameter circles here and a 1.25 there. So I'm gonna go circle. By default, that gives you a tangent radius one. So I'll click here, 0.5, space bar. Hover over my arc, it lights up the center, 0.5. And then down here, hover over my arc, click the center, 0.625, because that one's 1 1.25 diameter. And there we go. Now the last thing I have is I need to round these corners all around the inside shape. And I can see from my note right here, that's conveniently located right here, the rounds and fillets are a radius 
I apologize for the bell. I work in a school with very loud bells, so we don't have any excuse not to hear them. So I'll show you the fillet command. It's located up here, but what I like to do is type F for fillet, hit enter. Now one thing that's confusing about the fillet command, when you hit enter it says, okay, select your objects. But what they don't tell you is you need to set up your radius down here. Okay, they light it up in, in blue to let you know that if you type R and hit enter, It'll let you specify your radius, which is 0.5, like we talked about earlier. And I'll hit enter. Now any two lines I select will put a radius in of 0.5 between the two. So if I select these two, there we are. Hit spacebar again. It'll save my radius this time. Right there. Right there. Right there. And I'm just hitting spacebar to go back in. Now let me show you another trick. If I type F for fillet and hit enter, and I go radius 0.5, and then one little thing that's hidden down here is multiple. So if I type M and hit enter, now I can just go around and put as many radii as I want. Just have to carefully make sure I select the right things. Okay, so you can do it with the repeat command, or you can do it this way. This way is maybe a little bit faster, but I don't know if it saves you a ton of time. And then when you select multiple, the only difference is you have to hit escape at the end to end the command. But we can see here between these two, that looks awfully similar, and it is 100% right. So now for my students, for the project that this is a part of, they're going to go ahead and save this. And this is part of their... MS0904 project. They're going to name it MS0904-2, I believe it is. Maybe one. I'll have to look back at that. Okay, but that's how you create um, the positioning spacer, as they call it in this tutorial. Okay.